then it's Saturday night I guess that means we're going to play some more D&D &D, yes all right I don't know why I'm talking in accents I must be one of those days maybe I'm just punch drunk from being awake so much anyways how's everyone doing how's everyone doing hey Shadster is K everybody everybody Everybody, um, Play it again. Gotta be in a good mood. I don't know why I've got Backstreet Boys stuck on the mind. The uh, something that was said during this week. Everybody, all the wonderful peoples, all the wonderful peoples. Alrighty. Yeah, TZX is back with us. Zip, how you doing tonight? Didn't we just talk a little bit ago? Yeah, Backstreet Boys on the mind. I don't know why. Anyways, enough uh, enough shenanigans so far. Uh, a couple of quick things before we get too much further. You guys are on mute. I'll talk to you in a minute. Um. <laughs> <laughs> all right so a couple of things to kind of kind of hit on mute it over here no okay now they can hear me even though they're on mute until i turn them off mute so yeah don't judge me all right don't judge me anyway so a couple of things uh shout outs thank you to sirenscape for the background music and soundboards uh hopefully they're all coming through and they're kind of cool yep there we go. Ah, the ducking's working again. Yeah, I got a message from uh, Sirenscape saying, hey, we checked out your stuff. It was really cool how when people talk, the music kind of goes, dips low. And when no one's talking, the music ramps back up. Yeah, it's really cool that way, right? So hopefully I got that fixed. Uh, so it doesn't crescendo at the wrong moment. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so yeah, Soundscape, Sirenscape, awesome. Great background soundscapes. Uh, they just released their Rhyme of the Frost Maiden sound sets. Those are really cool. I'm looking forward to using those in the near future, even though I did use them the last couple of days. Um, lots of fun there. Uh, shout out and thank you to uh, the community. Uh, everybody who's uh, followed, subscribed, tossed bits, uh, just general well wishes and whatnot. You guys are awesome and amazing. And without you, these streams couldn't be possible. Uh, I want to draw your attention up top. Uh, it says uh, $2,018 uh, and zero cents in for extra life. Uh, that is because as this morning, we crossed our $2,000 goal. So we just went ahead and pushed that up to $5,000. Uh, again, always support the kids. The kids are always there. I uh, do have some a new list of things for viewer interaction that I'm working on. I've talked this over with a couple people uh, just an hour, hour or so. And I'm possibly going to look at implementing them next week. Uh, bits where things where it's like whether you throw bits or tip or whatever, you can then affect what the party does. Whether or not they get things like a nat 20 on a roll automatically. Whether or not they find a mysterious potion. Or if they cast a spell and some random effect happens off the random wild magic table. Who knows? Even do something nice for me as the dungeon master. We'll find out. <laughs> or potentially say, hey, let's see if they can go on this adventure or that adventure now. See? But more, more on that to come, which you'll see. Uh, as you can see down here below, uh, we have our new schedule. Uh, we've got the new show over there. Yeah, that's where the new show is. Uh, Sco Sunday with Scoob. Uh, Sunday mornings at 8 in the morning. I don't know what I was thinking, but you all asked me to do it, so I'm going to do it. So, again, we're going to have fun with this. Uh, it's going to be kind of an opportunity to just sit, drink coffee, chat, play some games, and deep dive into various sessions and answer questions. See what happens. Uh, so I think that's pretty much it. We had a great session this morning uh, with the with Twilight's uh, Gleaming. Uh, they found some shadows and sometimes shadows are not the 
friendly things we want to find. I don't know a point where they ever are, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, so now we'll shift gears back into our challenge accepted where the party is in Paradon. There's a series of murders that are happening and the party has been is uh is trying to figure out what happens. So with that, we will bring in our cast, we'll do our recap, get to it. Good evening everybody, how we doing? Be able to talk now. Are you not talking? Yes, hey. Oh, there we go. Yay! Uh, <laughs> I was starting to think I hit the wrong switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, there seems to be an echo. You got to go somewhere? No? Okay. Hopefully it wasn't. Nope. All my stuff is muted. Cool. All right. So, where we left off. Yesterday, the part, or not yesterday, last week, <laughs> the part, I play too many D&D games, all right? It's starting to bleed together, man. I mean, I just saw I, I just saw you, Garrett, last night on a game, and now I'm seeing him again on a game. It's like, uh, okay. Days, time, yeah. Last week, <laughs> the party uh, was uh, decided to take the daytime to investigate and try to get some information and find some clues to help in determining who was it who has been committing these murders. Uh, one victim has already uh, happened. One victim has already uh, fallen for this as the start of the cycle that seems to repeat itself every 13 years. The party is trying to determine what is going on. Uh, they went to a market and uh, had a, fun, a bunch of conversations with some various shopkeepers, picked up some vegetables, uh, saw a dwarf completely intimidate a minotaur and <clears throat> some other things with them. And then came back to their to the house to the lodging, and while they were there, they decided, you know what, we're gonna play it safe and we're gonna stay in indoors that night. So while they were waiting indoors, uh, there was a game of chess. Uh, there was uh, <laughs> a, 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 after the game of, after a game of, of chess. Uh, they heard a noise and then some uh, started hearing whistles of the constables running through the city crazy because apparently another murder had occurred. Uh, they went the, after some discussion on how they were going to exit the hot lodge. Uh, some conversations about potentially tethering each other together. Uh, some of the intentions may not have been entirely honest in that suggestion. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> But they got there and did a little preliminary investigation. Then they had a conversation with uh, Inspector Logan and uh, had decided to volunteer their services as intrepid adventurers who want to right the wrongs and make the world a better place. And <laughs> so Inspector Logan is going to put them on patrol on patrol in a particular in a, in a in a part of the city where they will be hopefully watching and waiting for something to occur. So. As we get in, we are starting to come onto that patrol. Uh, prior to going onto the patrol, is there anything anyone wishes to do prior to going on patrol? Stay away from the rope. Stay away from the rope. That'd be a good call. Unless it's a ball of string, though, so I'm sure you'll bat around. Well, I, would, I would actually like that. That'd be fun. <laughs> I should have packed my 50 foot yarn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still say we need a bell for her. I'm, I'm just telling you that, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just going like that, you know, just tinkling the bell. You, know, you, you might want some way of it only being you guys that can hear it, and I'm still going to tinkle it. So. This is stealth is key. Let's, uh, let's try not to create any more noise than we already are. That is a very good point. The bell would make a lot of noise. I'm just going and, and checking, you know, my pack, make sure I have everything with me. Um, I've got my shield and long sword out, uh, taking a little bit more of a defensive posture uh, as we uh, prepare to go out. Um, and that's that's pretty much what I've got. It's always wise to make precautions. Yeah, I sharpen up my battle axe a little bit and uh, just kind of uh, prepare and say a little prayer to, to my god. 
And as uh, as you guys are making your preparations, uh, Yulia uh, returns back to the lodging house. Uh, she and Kerrigan had gone off to do some investigating of their own. Uh, Kerrigan is still out investigating, so you're not sure what where it happens. The two of them seem to have been separated. And now Yuvia has returned to kind of see what's going on with the group. Hey, you're back, you're back, you're back. <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, so, what what have you found so far? Yes. There seems to be a, a coachman as a result. Uh, mustache, I believe he had. I might be wrong, though. Did you see? Did you saw the culprit this time? No, I, we didn't get a good look at it yet. We're still trying to find them. Uh, do you guys think it's uh, connected to the previous murder? The same uh, wounds or anything? Yes, we, we've been able to determine that uh, the the first murder and this one are related. Uh, both women appeared to be of the same profession. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we met uh, some of the ladies that were standing by uh, last evening. And um, they knew the second victim. They did not know the first. Uh, but everything that we've seen seems to indicate that uh, these are all of somewhat similar background and uh, we definitely see them as connected. Did you find it weird? Because uh, before, I, I believe someone told us that the kill, uh, the murders back then was only once every 13 years, but now they do twice uh point of fact it's actually every it's actually a series of murders every oh, like every 13 years so it used I, to be uh, approximately five victims or so and mm -hmm. then the murders right. stop for 13 years so you there have been two victims already there are potentially three more and then you'll lose sight of this i'll probably lose uh, whatever lose the object for another decade plus because right now the only thing that seems consistent based on the story the uh, Prennyworth gave you and <coughs> what uh, you've determined so far is that the item in question it seems to be associated with these murders because they both seem to appear on the same cycle because the information was like this thing only comes up every 13 years and as you've come to Paradon You've learned that a series of murders seem to occur every 13 years. So the two seem like they might be related, but until, but the only way to find out is to pursue uh, and investigate the murders. Well, I'm going to retcon that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, have you found any relation to the previous uh, victim? Is the... Uh, Inspector said anything about it? I don't I don't know for sure. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like they were related uh, as of the same family, simply that they were both either in the wrong place at the wrong time uh, or there may be some other motive uh, tied to their their uh, status in society. Uh. And, and to, to kind of help bring you further up to speed, uh, it appears, at least to me, uh, that uh, there was first the, the, the in the way of, of the murders, there was first the slit uh, across the throat, uh, and then they removed, uh, they, they cut into the, the torso uh, and removed uh, some of those organs. Uh, and, that, and there wasn't any, there wasn't much blood. Uh, so that tells me that the individual was already dead uh, before uh, the organs were removed. 
So the inspector did not like confirm. That's just my no it, my sense of it. The cuts and, were very, very surgical. Uh, I've seen a lot of it in battle, and it was very, very clean. Not what you would expect to see when somebody has taken somebody's throat and cut it across. Very strange. Mm. Horrible. And where's I'm not this laughing thing? at you. I'm laughing at something else. Don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I suddenly have this urge to go get some peanuts to make sure I have plenty of iron in my blood. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> and where was this happen? Uh, is there perhaps any connection to the location of both murder? It seems they were they were all in the same part of town, uh, the same district uh, of town. I think it's going uh, for Troll tonight, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. As the eager one has spoken, we are going on patrol uh, this evening uh, to help in the investigation. Uh, you know, at first, I was hesitant to do it, but now that we've received the invitation, I think that we are less likely to be considered the suspects. Mm. Yeah. I forgot too. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Scuba. Oh, what uh, do I do? I know some new information because I did some uh, investigation uh, investigation myself on this town. So, uh, yes, as you were out investigating the previous night, uh, you noticed uh, quite a few things uh, that seemed uh, particularly odd. Aside from the fact these are all silly folk and you're used to being out in the wilderness, so a lot of things they do are odd, but these are some things that really kind of struck you as odd of note. Uh, you notice that a uh, number of people who were out wandering at night to try and, as they were going, you notice the women would wear these like high uh, collars that seemed like uh, metal of somewhat to try to prevent slashing. Uh, you would see uh, people. You you would see, you see the uh, constables trying to maintain patrol, but getting run ragged when little 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 urchins or people who really have nothing better to do would cry out uh, what turned out to be false alarms of various things that are going on to try because uh, they some people think it's funny to make light of the situation. Um, as for Anything, anything more than that? It wasn't a whole lot you were able to turn up. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, murders, the the murders do seem to be focused on a particular particular trade of uh, pe of workers within the city. I'm trying to make sure I'm keeping that as generic and where you could read between the lines as to what it is. Uh, so. Um, it was it's, that's what you were able to kind of idea id and um not really and there's some very there's is a reward apparently that's been posted for the capture of the murderer um and that there might be a meeting of some uh, there might be a meeting or something uh this night to uh with various merchant own merchant owners to try to come together to come up with a to evaluate the amount of the reward and whether or not to raise it because the fact that you know this is affecting their businesses and, and the general safety of the community so they want to find the killer before the he or she or whatever vanishes again so, um, i'm gonna relay that information to the party i mean uh most of it that uh i feel it's important and do I know that there's some kind of uh, organization like a uh, uh, merchant organization, like they have some, uh, you know, uh, it's some, some huge network about the city and what's happening. Is that something you're asking me or something you're telling them? Yeah. Uh, sometimes, uh, something I'm asking you. What is, uh, 
trying to find what some kind of network like a thieves guild or something like that or some yeah, other... or merchants guild that maybe they have so much information about uh, the past about these events uh nothing beyond what i've already said as far as the merch as uh, far as a merchants guild there you there you haven't really found signs of one in uh paradon but there is a there is going to be a meeting of merchants this very night while you guys are set to be on patrol. Uh, hmm. Should be a large congregation of uh, peop of various merchant owners to discuss the current situation and again discuss uh, raising the reward for capturing the murderer. Okay. So. <laughs> so What's the next plan uh, about uh, this petrol? Uh, do you uh, do we get uh, some co oh, confidence? How's this going to go? Oh, I believe yeah. we are supposed to go on patrol. Hopefully, we'll find out a little bit more information, and maybe we'll even see the, cus the suspect or uh, 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 culprit. Excuse me. Uh, Scoob, is the is the patrol that we're going to be on? Is it stationary? Are we searching through? A uh, it's part going of the to district? be stationary on a uh, particular uh, section, uh, cross cross street section, mm -hmm. like a particular intersection. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys are about ready to go, there is going. Are you about ready to head out for this? It's uh, getting to be uh, late in the evening. Now that you've all kind of assembled and got yourselves together. If uh, you're ready to go, then there's a knock on the door, and Inspector Logan is there to greet you and says that uh, thanks you for your assistance in uh, helping uh, to helping the city the watch tonight, and proceeds to lead you to where you'll be standing watch. Okay. Yay. Yay. So he brings you out to a particular street corner. Actually, know what that street is. I did. Up there. Let's see. <laughs> at the corner of hidden treasure and missing amulets. Nope, at the, uh, <laughs> you guys will be near. I like that street. That is a good street. That's a great street name. <laughs> a lovely street name. <clears throat> um, over at the corner of Dayton and Alzenberry Street. Kind of leads you over there and says, uh, this is pretty much where it is, so you can... Uh, Come, you ask that actually it's stationary, but you can kind of wand, wander through. Actually, not so much stationary, but this is generally the area you're going to be kind of patrolling in to see what's uh, what may or may not happen. Um, there are several streets and alleyways. Again, this is a very condensed, built-up city, so there's always kinds of blind turns and alleys and and whatnot. And like every night in Paradon, there is a thick fog that hovers, hangs about the city. Visibility is only a few feet in front of you, and one of the consistent things as far as finding your way is the gas, is the lamps that have the lanterns that ha that are lit that are spaced evenly out along the street, along the main thoroughfares, to kind of guide you across those major uh, streets in the city. Uh, two questions: Is there a curfew in place where most of the uh, citizens are indoors now. Uh, there's no official curfew. Uh, it's generally a uh, good rule of thumb because of uh, based on past history and whatnot. It's uh, women are women are young women are encouraged to be escorted everywhere they go. Uh, mm -hmm. There's not a lot of uh, street activity as you get closer and closer to midnight mm -hmm. because midnight is when the murders occur. So you, there's going to be less people, but there's still people out on the streets. It's just kind of sporadic and a little, little eerie because you'll hear footsteps in the fog, walking about as you're uh, going about. 
All right, second question. Uh, is Inspector Logan still with us? No, he leaves you at your spot and says that he has business to, he has uh, other other patrols to check in on, and he uh, wanders off. Okay. Mm-hmm. Earl? So, so is this like a block that we're walking around, like, like so many blocks? Yeah, it's uh, several. It's a couple. Of, it's a couple of blocks to kind of walk through. Uh, this is the area. He kind of says it's like there are other patrols, but just kind of keep your eyes out and see. And yeah, if I see any of the patrols as we walk by, I'm gonna wait at him. <laughs> I'm gonna look over at Pearl and say, "Now, <clears throat> I realize yeah. that your curious nature is to go and explore, but please try to stay with us." Why would you follow me? We've all got problems. It's called a buddy system. Let's stick together. Yes, I agree. Oh, I totally agree we should stick together. (laughs) So are we on like a main thing here, Steve? Or is this just kind of like typical inner city street? Um, you, the inner city street kind of connects, uh, these have the street light, the street lamps, uh, uh, flittered about, you see as certain turnoffs lead in, there are no street lights along those turnoffs as they lead in between some of the buildings. Mm -hmm. Um, but the main, the main, the main roads, which one of them you're walk, you're able to, a couple of them you're going to walk along for as far as the area, they Mm -hmm. are lit spread with these lanterns, but even with the fog, you're still on the, you can see them it's kind of like when you when you when you look at like an early morning or whatever and there's a fog there's a street lamp you can see just the little halo of light around it in the distance but you can't really see how far the distance is that's kind of this thick fog that you see about you see shadows in the fog walking through as a uh, for people that are also outdoors uh, at this time of night as we get later and later in the evening are all the streets and alleyways accessible by carriage? No. Most, uh, uh, quite a number of them are too narrow for a carriage. There may, there may be just wide enough for if Tarvos and his brother to walk side by side. That and that would still be a tight <laughs> squeeze in some spots. The other brother. <laughs> so, I, so I can get a general sense of the overall layout that there's limited access where someone could come in with a carriage uh yeah if you're familiar with the like when you're familiar with the town of alaki alaki is fairly well developed as far as the various uh cities within barovia this is a lot more compact and a lot more mm-hmm. built up than mm-hmm. Velaki is mm-hmm. like if Velaki exist if if Velaki were to build itself up and grow in population over the course of a hundred years, this is the kind of city you would end up finding. Okay. So our vision is pretty limited right now with the, with the maybe about 10 or maybe about 10 or 15 feet uh, at best. After that, it's really kind of lost in the fog. Does the light really give us any increased visibility or just tell us where the streets are? No, it just kind of guides you. It's like if I follow the row of lights, I know I'm in a, I, I, I know I'm along a city. As you get close, you'll see certain markers. Mm-hmm. I mean, there isn't like a lot of like street signs or anything like that. This is kind of one of those. It's like you heard the name of the streets, but you're like, I, I, am I still on this one or did I walk onto Elm Street or did I walk on to sleepy hollow drive i i really don't know because i don't i don't know what these streets are <laughs> if i if we if i see any streets that say elm or uh, sleepy hollow we will avoid them at all yeah. costs. <laughs> no. i imagine why um, i mean happy halloween it is october right right <laughs> would you say that we can tell the difference in the footfalls like between women and men where we're maybe if somebody was wearing heels for instance or versus uh, flat shoes um yeah, it'd be a slight difference. I mean, we're not okay. talking we're not talking like stilettos on stone. No, 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 no. But I mean, it would be a discernible difference, I think. Yeah, there's a okay. You could, you could make an educated guess, uh, depending on the pace and who's there. Thinking about the shoes of this kind of time, sure. uh, the heels are are there, but they're a, a thick kind of wooden heel, so it's that yeah. wood on stone. Like when you if you if you had like a cane, tapped it on the stone. As you walked, you kind of get that, um, the little clopping of that. You can determine that 
and then you can determine like of course shoes sh horseshoes on cobblestone traveling down every so often you hear uh the that indication of a carriage uh late at night going from okay. one spot to another of course i'd be using my ears you know uh, yeah true yeah and you you notice as you as as the night progresses the sounds dwindle and, and it becomes quieter see this street before? That seemed familiar. I like going down the same street. I like to wander. Let's go to a different <laughs> Given the the obvious danger of that, let's uh let's try and stick together uh, as best we can because if you go off and I can't see you. I can't find you. <laughs> you come with me. I don't know why that's hard for you. Actually, that's a good idea. I mean, uh, if we split into two, and it will uh, give us a gr gr greater range for vision. But we we can just uh, try to be stealthy, you know. And when at, when something comes out, we can. We're in a shouting range, so we can uh, warning each other. I mean, this is, this fog is too thick if we group together like this. Fuck Ali. <laughs> Sorry. Dr. Tavros, what do you think of this idea? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Normally, I know that it's not safe to split people up, but um, I think as long as we stay within 10 feet of each other, it might not be a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, you were the one that was stabbed after all, so I figured I'd oh, ask you. Yes. <laughs> wow, pulling, not pulling punches on that one, are you? <laughs> I think right now, I just like the smartest one out of the whole group right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We shall see. Alrighty. So as you uh as you're coming around a, a, a corner and whatnot. Um give me a pers who what is the marching order for this uh travel through the city? that right now i'll probably I am, up near the front uh what's that Cyprus? i was gonna say i'm probably up near the front maybe not that at the front but but at least second anyways you mean you don't want to be in the back again not this time no. <laughs> i'm i'm staying within five feet of nail of uh, of uh, pearl at all times all right pearl <laughs> yeah pearl? Maybe, uh... i'm titus huh Apparently, I'm next to Titus. <laughs> Where are you in the order? Are this uh, you two in front of of Tarvos or behind Tarvos? Oh, I'm probably in the very front because I'm just like, yay! I get to move around, yay! And I'm just kind of like. <laughs> so regrettably, <laughs> I'm in front. <laughs> I'll follow behind them. Pearl, with, Titus, uh, with Tarvos, it, yeah. and I guess uh, Yuvia at the end, at the rear. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the best, anyways. To heal all of us. I'm, I'm keeping down. an eye on Yuvia. No, I'm 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 not. He's kind of more or less diagonally to me. Not maybe not behind me, but kind of a in the order kind of he's a behind me. Thing. But... In, in yeah, a group yeah, yeah. Of four, it's like yeah. Carl, Titus, uh, yes, Carvos, yep, yeah. yeah. And of course, like I said, I'm going exactly back and forth across the the, the road. <laughs> Here we go. Slightly ahead, just 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 outside of visual of uh, 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 every so often, it's as she creeps out of visual range, she comes back in and darts across the street again. Titus just shakes his head and continues to press on. <sighs> Something like that. Um, go ahead and give me a perception check, Pearl, since you are out in. I 
is an 11. 11. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, it seems fairly quiet. Um, as you go about, there's uh, still some people walking around. It's about about eleven or so in at night. At, at night, it's it's not quite there. It's between that ten thirty and eleven thirty time frame as you're walking. You're not quite hearing anything. You are no, you do notice eventually that there's less people wandering about in the, in the uh, city. Um, let's see, Titus, give me a perception check while Pearl is off investigating some random thing around a street lamp. Uh, 14. All right, my son. 14. Uh, she is looking in one direction. You're looking, uh, down another street. Nothing, uh, comes to mind. Nothing sticks out. Uh, again, you see a few shadows through the mist as people are walking. Uh, there's a couple of solitary figures, a couple of of uh, pairs of figures, um, one group of like three or four walking around together uh, at night. A little while later goes on, and Tarvos, go ahead and give me a perception. Uh, Eleven. Just your attention is focused on what on trying to keep be being as tall and as uh, that overlooking is far looking as you are you are trying to make sure you keep pearl in line of sight at all times as she flits from thing to thing shiny thing to shiny thing down the street it's Don't quite distract it's quite distracting um <laughs> yuvia or you yuvia go ahead yeah. and give me a perception check uh, can I use uh, my bardic inspiration for that? You certainly can. Okay. <laughs> and perception. Eleven plus. <laughs> I'm glad I used it. Sixteen. Okay. 16 all right as uh the party passes a street uh you take a moment and uh kind of look down it as a second glance and and then you hear a brief shrill scream that ends with the sound of a body falling heavily onto the ground i will uh just stop and uh signal everyone did you hear that then uh I will point out to that sound uh, originate from. Uh, the sound is originate originating from your right, uh, down a particular uh, down a side street. Uh, there's street lamps on the street are a little further spaced apart, so it's not a busy street compared to the one you're on or currently. And you see uh, a you see a form of a of looks like a person just inside the. Just at the edge of the street lamp. Yeah. Can I run up there? Uh, not like, like I'm not dashing, but I'm you know, moving up that way. Certainly can. I would like to yeah. dash towards it if I can. Okay. If you have, if you have a full dash. <laughs> I oh, thought okay. uh, you weren't the party. Uh, did uh, Inspector Logan give us a whistle or anything? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> and to play him first before we blow a whistle anyway? That's, I'm not, I'm, I know. All right, uh, I will obviously stay within five feet of, uh, of Pearl. All right, so you guys, <laughs> so you ever, everybody kind of rushes over? Yes. Yeah. All right, you rush over. The body is, the body of a young woman lies in a heap on the ground. The dim light reveals another figure standing stiffly and looking down at the corpse. Then the figure turns and with heavy clanking footsteps strides purposely down the street which way towards us or away uh away as the figure comes into light on the next street light uh, you see that it it seems it is a woman uh but her movements are very jerky and unnatural as she walks along 
Can I like run out in front of her to to you know, like run around and, and and so I can see her? Okay, you run around in front. Uh, her face gleams in an odd sheen. Uh, again, as she's attempting to to move, it's very jerky in the in unnatural. And there's like a, 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 a creaking noise that emanates from inside her body as she... And I try to identify her. Uh, how do you want to try and identify her? Investigation? Or... Uh, it sounds like she's made out of something. That would be an investigation. <laughs> Did you say there was a body on the ground? Yes, there's a body of a young woman on the ground. Okay, I would like to investigate that if I can. Alrighty. <laughs> I'm not very good at the investigation. This is not. <laughs> I did not build an investigator. <laughs> okay. Next time I'll have you make a ship. How about that? <laughs> oh boy. What did you get? I got a five. Oh. Since I'm also there within five yes. feet of her. <laughs> I yes, because like you're to... keeping up with her. Go ahead and make an investigation. Uh, 12. <laughs> we do not <laughs> roll on this game for some reason. It's not even Avre. We can't, like, we can't even blame Avre, you know? I know, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> looking at this person, it's a little bit taller than an average woman. It's kind of, kind of bulkier, and you see the jerky movements and the face, and it, it definitely doesn't look living. As it's clunking about. Carvos, uh, go ahead and give me a medicine check as you inspect the body. Is there any uh, Ooh. suspicious? Got a 19. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, you got a 19? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Don't give up. All right, you, go ahead. Give you. I'll yeah. get back to Tarvos in a second. Yep. Yep. Is there any uh, suspicious sound or person in uh beside of that uh lady i mean like uh sounds like uh footsteps or running that goes off to somewhere or nope nope okay. it's uh, very quiet the, right now the overpowering sound is the sound of the clanking of the footsteps as the as the woman continues to walk doesn't even stop to give any any regard to Pearl and Titus as they're trying to look at her. She strides past. They, Pearl being Pearl runs up to try to look again. It just strides past. And after a few minutes of those, they're about they're about 15 feet. Uh, uh, they're coming in. They've leave. They've left one street light and are coming into sight of the next street light, 20 feet away from uh, Tarvos and yourself. If you're staying with Tarvos, Tarvos, your medicine check. You go and you look. And try, th fearing the worst, there's no injuries. There's no blood. There's no cuts, scrapes, anything. There's still there's a there's a steady breathing. Uh, you can feel breath coming as she's taking in air, and breathing, and looking at it, and looking again at the pearl hopscotching around, the the fate figure walking. It's probably a safe bet she fainted. Oh, okay. All right. Screamed and fainted. Right there. Bloop. Fell on the ground. And is she in the middle of the street? No, she's on the she's she's on the she's she's there right there at the street light. Um, okay, on okay. The, on the sidewalk, so to speak. Okay, I, I was gonna say if, if she was in the middle of the street, I was gonna pick her up and put her somewhere living or uh, safe. But... but other than that, she seems fine. She's just unconscious because of she fainted. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll stand up and follow um, Titus and and, uh, and uh, Pearl, and uh, I'll let Elvia know that uh, she's just uh, she just passed out. It's okay. Uh, we should focus on whatever that is. All right. Hey, hey. No, 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 no. The person you're following. Know what you are. Oh, I'm saying hi. I'm saying hi to the person I'm following. <laughs> keeps walking. I I want to prevent this. You're cutting out a little bit, Titus. You have to say it again, my friend. I said I, I want to prevent this uh, mechanized lady from walking away. How do you propose to try and do that? 
Uh, well, she's obviously not uh, paying attention to us waving and jumping about. Nope. Uh, so I am going to uh, try and knock her over with my shield. Okay. <laughs> that is interesting. Let's see, that it would be a strength check. Since I'm rolling so well, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you're, you're you're rolling outstanding. <laughs> so here we go, first dice roll of the night. Bada bang, bada boom, bada bang. <laughs> Alrighty, opposing streak checks. Alrighty, Titus, roll your strength check. Oh yeah, that's unsuccessful. That's an eight. Yeah. <laughs> see you running nope. into you, you you don your shield, you 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 prep up and you're like charge and cling and you just kinda Fall back, a uh, fall back, and try to hold yourself steady. And the thing just. <laughs> you make a fun noise. Can I make that noise on you too? Perhaps, then, uh, perhaps later. <laughs> so I, there... I, I, say, I said that to the lady. Oh, okay. Oh, is is the uh, is there any reaction? Does it pause? Does it just it, keep it, it, moving. It pause slightly because of the impact, but after that, it. Kind of, it's almost like it stuttered a moment and then just kept going. It's a very and, kind of clunky walking as it goes. Anytime, uh, Ilthia still uh, stand uh, stand by uh, beside the unconscious person and try to drag her into like uh, away from the street. And as she heard that cling, she will shout that, "Is there?" A What's happened there? Uh, give me a quick perception check. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice. 22. Um, as you're looking about, you see that they have gone almost 30 feet from you. Uh, okay. Because you that's where the sound was. They've they seem to have completely <laughs> forgotten about you standing around this unconscious woman uh who is she's not in any danger she's just unconscious all right, all right um, so she said after a little bit she does start to to stir like she's getting ready to come out of it so she seems fine yeah but so the rest of the group is you see down at another at the at two street lights down you see you, or at this point, probably almost the third street light down. Uh, you're starting to see that you're kind of seeing as the haze in the distance, and there's a shadow around the haze as it looks like the figures are passing there. It's it's a ways out, but you if you hurry, you could catch up to them before they get too far away. Yeah, uh, after uh, Ilvia uh, drag the unconscious person uh, like safe from the from like everyone walking i mean it's foggy uh he, she might be stepped no oh, there's so, a you, you, there's a little like yeah. door stoop or something nearby yeah. you could get her i mean if you if you you could prop her up against a, a against a wall nearby yeah where it's like she'll she's do that kind of in the way so you kind of just move her over yeah. prop her up so she can as she starts and she's she's kind of doing the the, the thing where she it looks like consciousness is on the verge of coming back to her. Yeah. Then if we will catch up with the party, that's over. Yep. So <laughs> you rush up, you catch up, and you see Titus is sitting on the ground, stand, or not sitting, but standing there, kind of adjusting his arm a little bit because it hurt a little bit it's doing that impact <laughs> into, <laughs> into, into, the, into, the, uh, into the mechanized woman as she continues to walk and, and whatnot. So. Will you uh, be fine? You don't talk I'm gonna, much. I'm gonna reach out and grab her arm and try to hold the person. All right. Closing strength check. Let's see if you're trying to restrain her. I'll help. You'll help. So Tarvel, she'll get advantage. 
Oh, thank God. <laughs> okay, that's better. Oof. Uh, so the first one was a natural one. Uh, the second one is a 21. She, you grab her, you feel yourself holding on, and she just pulls away from you and keeps going. I'm sorry about my friend. I don't know why they keep doing that. I want you to be my friend, though. If I only had my rope right in my hand, I feel like that might do the trick. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna... What should we do? She doesn't seem to be responding, and I don't want to hurt her, but she's not leaving me much option. So... so uh... Tell, um, did... Go ahead, Pearl. Did you tell us the reaction of the like the woman that she was that she had um just painted uh what do you mean like did did tavros tell us that the woman had just painted we didn't pay attention to the woman we went off to the oh you no, haven't had that conversation because you have spent all of your attention <laughs> on the metal lady walking you it's like oh Ooh. person date who are you be my friend be my friend. Uh, that you, he hadn't even, and then he, you hadn't even, you hadn't even stopped for ten seconds to sit there and ask, "Hey, is that person okay?" Nope. It's all about making friends with this metal person who's walking down. Yep. <laughs> She's shiny. <laughs> She's shiny, kind of like... and it's the mist and everything else as kind of continues moving to in there. Well, I, I like to move. Okay. Ivia, what is there anything you would like to do or comment on at this attempt? Because you saw, you heard Titus kind of charge at it to, to knock it over. You saw Tarvos grab it by the arm and couldn't hold on to the hold on to it as it continued to walk along. So what 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 have you found about this person? She's shiny and she makes a funny noise and I like it. It's very strong. Should we follow you? Or... I'm okay with that. I think that's the best option for now. What's the state of the woman that was in the, in the street? She simply fainted. Yeah. And I'll just put her in safety. You'll be okay. Probably better that she just walks home. I don't want to make like a... a just random uh, assumption without, you know, asking about you. But I'm guessing that the one that uh, fainted saw this metal creature, thought it was a scary creature, thought maybe she was going to die, and fainted. So now this creature is walking away, worried that they're going to get back to murder. And am I, like, am I, does Pearl figure this out? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Um, roll an intelligence check. Hmm. Intelligence would be on the chance. Oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> this is why we love playing D and D. You never know what the dice are gonna tell you. <laughs> That's a six. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> you... Yeah, I don't have very high intelligence. It's like a zero plus zero. <laughs> You're not sure why someone would faint at the sight of this thing? It seems really cool to you and everything else. It's a lot like you don't understand why people don't follow you when you run off into the mist. It just Exactly. Doesn't this does not compute. <laughs> if we continue following uh, this mechanized lady, are we going to be going outside of the patrol zone or a little bit? You see her, she, it kind of walks and every uh, kind of just on random just turns down a down a street. Uh, do you notice that it typically it, 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 it just kind of turns and goes and turns and goes. It's just very weird and random, but it just follows along the street trying to walk does along. It, does it seem like it's a like random or is it maybe like like is it is it following a patrol of its own? Make an intelligence check. Or make an insight check. Uh, oh, you, don't be my friend um, now. Will you be my friend later, maybe? <laughs> like, 
Can I see the six? A six. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Tough to say, but it seems to wander. Okay. We will uh, try to knock her head, like knock, knock, knock. Then, hey, <laughs> you there? Do you understand us? Like something like that. Person. You can person. certainly person. try. <laughs> 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 and she keeps doing that. Knock, knock, knock. You can certainly yeah. try. Let's see. <laughs> uh, let's go it's with an athletics check it. to climb up <laughs> and uh, try and. Do the knock, knock, knock on the head. So go ahead and give me an athletics check, sir. It's 14. Each episode, somebody's going to knock. Wait, wait, wait. Athletics. No, no, sorry. Uh, 11. 11. Um, yeah. You go up there, but the, the, the mist and the amount of moisture in the air from the, from the mist, you, you can't quite get purchase high enough because, I mean, she's almost as tall as Tavros walking mm. along. So... You trying to jump up and knock a, you just can't quite get a grip and you slip off. Uh, can I perceive if there's any weapons or any any way this mechanized lady could go on the offensive? Go ahead and give me an investigation check. Alright, strike two. Further, further away from where it's supposed to be. <laughs> hey, at least they're all coming with me this time. True. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We're it's learning. True. Yeah. Uh, not that you can tell the figure is dressed in appears to be a dress it seems to be something a similar outfit to what the women who have been murdered in the past or someone who's of that particular profession would wear it's not a very good disguise but it seems to be something similar uh, but you don't see any weapons or anything uh, about the figure, just walking along. So, that I perceive that, do I understand that this could be a decoy, a, a, a bait? Go ahead and give me a Ooh. insight check. Dang. <laughs> it's all about how you ask your question. Oh. Uh, well, does a 21 help? A 21 helps a lot. Wow. Uh, this does it does appear to be some type of decoy to allure out the uh, potential murderer. Not a very good decoy. Not a very perfect. Not a particularly convincing decoy. But it is a an attempt at a decoy as it continues to kind of clank and walk down the street. I'll I'll say to the group there. Uh, I I'm going to have to buff this mark out of my shield for nothing. <laughs> Wait. Your volume cut out again. I uh, I think that this. Is a I'll par- yes. your, your mic's cutting out again. It basically says I think he thinks that this is a decoy of some type, and that we should know you guys should not be wasting your time following or trying to stop it. Uh-huh. Anyway, that about Maybe it. We have to go back. Already on. Say again. Does that mean we have to go on the other road that we were already on? Well, at this point, you're kind of at a cross street. You've been following it for probably about twenty minutes, trying to discern what is going on and what this thing is. Uh, as you, as Titus kind of convinces you to stop and lets you know, it continues to clank along and eventually turns a corner and vanishes into the mist. I guess we should get back to where we're supposed to be. Yes. Does anybody have an idea of what time it is? I have no idea. (laughs) Uh, You heard the chimes of 11. I was just going to say. Probably about 20 minutes ago. So it's probably about 1130, almost midnight. We're running short of time. Let's run back. Let's run back. That'll be fun. I like to run. Okay. I'll go with her. You're going to run back? Yeah, Yeah, sure. All right. Titus, Yuvia, what are you going to do? 
Yeah. You're gonna run. You're all gonna run. Okay. Gonna so you all start running back and trying to figure out what's going on. Pearl, give me a survival check to tell me if you know which way to go. <sighs> I'm sorry. I knew he was Did you that really that think I was just gonna give it to you? No. I, no. I knew you were gonna do this to us. I was just hoping you would forget. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. Still a little but upset I'm, about that dude, Ramora's incident. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I just knew that you were going to do it because you did it to me last time. But I ran off. I got a 14. Okay. You, you think you turned down the right street? <laughs> and everybody just continues to follow. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking for street signs to see if I can figure out anything as we go. <laughs> um, go ahead and uh, give me a perception check, Pearl. A nine. I'm just like, yeah, let's 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 run. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> nope, I'm just like, yay, I get to run. Not really sure which way you're going. You don't really care. You're just running at this point, <laughs> thinking you're being productive. And lead and the fact that they're all following, you're just like so excited. Um Carvos, give me a perception check. That's pretty good. Uh Ooh, about 17 better uh as uh you as you're trying to follow her she gets a little bit off uh, in front and then you hear a noise uh to your left out of an alley a young woman dre brightly dressed stumbles out of an out of the alley she clutches her stomach which is stained with blood her other hand is outstretched help the madman's after me she cries from the alley a deep horse Boys calls, come back and meet your face, lassie. I will pull up my battle axe and let everybody else know. There's danger. Push her behind us um, so that she's where she's the guy has to go to through us to get to her. All right. Um, she's, she's stumbling towards you, hand outstretched, gripping her stomach. I'm pleading for help. Do you let her approach? Uh, yes. Yes, but I did let it. Maybe I will check on her. I was going to say, I was about to do an inside check on her. Okay, by all means. Uh, Yuvia, Pearl, go ahead and do inside checks. And. Okay. 13. She looks desperate. She she looks genuinely scared out of her mind, and she believes there is someone chasing her. Is uh, Tavers the only one that heard the voice? Uh, I let everybody else know. Yeah, he the, he he hears it, and depending on how close you guys are keeping up, you all you all pro you all would have heard it too. And then he, but the fact that he stopped. Pulled his battle axe, got into a defensive position, pretty much set the two of you off. <laughs> as to, uh, the three of you off. Okay, something's up. Right. I'm gonna run towards the uh, person that's leading. Uh, like he was saying, getting us between her and whatever she might be following. Um, okay. But also kind of keeping an eye on her. Um, so, you, do you move up ahead of Tarvos, or do you stay behind Tarvos? Because he was trying to be the one in front. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on how fast he goes, because I'm just going to go fast. Well, it's pretty <laughs> much, he's, it's like, here's the alley, Tarvos is charging, she walked out, so he went, er, turn. Yeah. So you you yeah. would be running back. Yeah. So. I'm going to run back and stand with Tarvos and, and look to see where she came from. Um, but again, try to, like, look back and forth between her and whatever is, is there. Okay. <laughs> Uh, down the alley, you can't really tell. It's like pitch black down the alley. Um, the mist as well, so it's really obscured. She's coming out, and she's got that panicked look on her face as she's approaching the four of you, making her way toward uh, 
you or Tarvos, since you're both kind of up in the front. Uh, Tarvos has already said he's letting her approach. What do you do? Me? Yeah, you, Pearl. I'll let her approach, yeah. You let her approach? Titus? I am staying within five feet of Pearl. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> I, I'd like to... I'm going to be looking at... I, your mic's cutting out again, my friend. I can't quite catch it. Um, I, I'm i going to uh, try to get a better look at the, the woman that's bleeding. All right. Go ahead and roll an investigation check for me. Uh, Yuvia, you did yeah. what are you... You did an insight. Is there anything else you wish to do as she's approaching? Yuvia will approach her and try to check her wound, if there's a visible one. And uh, she'll ask, uh, what's happened? Who's chasing you? Uh, uh, she's kind of in a, in a, in a semi-panic state. Uh, she moves toward... Um... Let's see how we go. <laughs> she approaches Tarvos and kind of stumbles, stumbles, stumbles in, uh, trying to get close to him. Titus, what was your investigation roll? A five. Okay, Yuvia, what was your investigation roll? Investigation. Seventeen. Seventeen. Today, or at least a lot better than us. <laughs> so as she as she gets within as she gets uh close to Tida, to Tarvos, you look and you notice there doesn't seem to be any there doesn't seem to be active blood flow. It's like it's stained, but you're not sure if there's a how deep a, of a wound there is underneath uh the clothing. And it's also very brightly colored, so it's getting kind of lost in there. She comes up onto Tarvos and as she kind of falls into Tarvos's arm, uh, she, one, her her hand her her uh, hand clutching her stomach, uh, comes out and there's a needle and char thrusts the needle at Tarvos. Is uh, is, I'm is Tarvos uh, does an eighteen does a uh, twenty two hit? Uh, yes. Yeah. I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Goob, is, is, is Tavros within five feet of me? Yes. Natural that's 20. A, that's, that's a disadvantage. Okay. Natural 20 for 24. So, uh, so you see, you, you have a chance to feel the needle. You feel a needle as it uh, punctures you, and you feel the the uh, po poison start to bubble across, start to take effect, but it doesn't. And she's there. What do you guys wish? So at that I'm, point, let's uh, roll some initiative. I was going to say, at that point, I'm absolutely bringing the axe down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you want to suppose? Fight, to? peoples. We got ourselves a fight. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, well, Pearl's going to be happy. She gets to do something. I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, at least that's how Pearl is. <laughs> you just want to post it in chat or? Uh, no, I'll call it out. You tell me what it is. Cool. Alrighty. Alright, Titus, what is your initiative? Natural one. Oh. oh. Okay, yeah. with a one. Alrighty. Uh, Pearl, on that. What is yours? Mine's a 17. Nice. Alright. All right, uh, Tarvos, what is yours? Uh, 12. All right. What is your dex modifier? Uh, good lord. Uh, plus one. Okay. And Yuvia, what's your uh, initiative? 23, I got uh, nat 20. Nice. 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 All right, so. Hey, Scoob, I have the, um, the protection uh, feet as a reaction. Okay. So when I when I when wielding a shield 
and a creature you see attacks a target other than you within five feet, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. Sounds and good. Within five feet, you... I, I lost you on that last part of the description. Yeah, that, uh, he's in five. He thinks he's five feet between me and Tarvos, right? Within yeah. five feet. He's, he, the, he's the still hit. So they still hit on the. It still hit Tarvos, but Tarvos resisted the poison and only took like one point of damage. I'm talking about oh, okay. for, for future reference. Yep. So. Tarvos would like that. <laughs> I've got that marked, Steve. Cool. Oh. All right. All right, Yuvia, you are up first in the order. What do you wish to do? So, uh, do Yuvia notice that the woman stabbed Tarvos with the needle? Uh, judging from Tarvos's reaction to the prick and the poison and her uh, reaction that it did not uh, do uh, what she thought it would, uh, yes, you can tell that she has attacked Tarvos in some way. So Ilvia will uh, uh, approach her and hey, stop there, and then try to grapple her. Alrighty, go ahead and do a strength posing strength check. Yep, uh, and I'm doing. Uh, I will use my uh, advantage for that. I still Alrighty. have one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> strength at uh, strength check. Yep. Uh, okay, plus one is five. Fourteen. Fourteen. All right. You are able to grapple her. She is now considered restrained. Or okay. she's considered grappled and restrained. Mm. So, Alrighty. yeah. She'll end her turn. All right. Pearl, you see Yuvia had come up and grabbed the woman. Uh, what do you wish to do? I'm gonna attack. Right. Uh, I'm gonna use my claws. Okay. Cause, yeah, because that works the same as the unarmed strike, right? Uh, I believe the claws have their own, have a damage to that, but uh... the same damage. It's just one's piercing, one's uh, or I'm sorry, one's slashing and one's bludgeoning. That's the only difference. Okay. Yeah. All right. You so. Claws out. What do you do? I'm gonna attack. I'm gonna uh, do the first one to attack. That is an eight to hit. That does not hit. Uh, fortunately, an eight does not hit. Oh, wait a minute. I believe you have advantage because the creature is oh, that's right, I do. drained. Fourteen. Fourteen just hits. Roll damage. And that is four damage. Four damage. Yep. Uh, and then I'll hit again with the bonus act or the bonus action. Alrighty. Which is Yep. Advantage. All attack roll as long as Yubia has it restrained, all attack rolls That's against 20. it have advantage. Natural twenty? Natural natural twenty. Alrighty. The rule is it's a uh, max damage, max die. Plus what you roll, plus any additionals. So Ooh, I got a max, uh, or no, I, yeah, I got max damage on it too. So that'll be. So it's four. It's a D four, which is four plus, and you got another four on the dice. Yeah, so that's plus eight, eight plus three. That is eleven points of damage. Nice. And I don't like that she hurt my friend. Can I? Because I have key points now, right? Yeah, I do. I'm, I'm still, I'm still learning this new one. Um, so, so I'm going to use a key point and use three of those. Alrighty. I got another nat twenty. Nice. Yeah. All right, roll your d4. Okay. Uh, Ah, only one. So uh, four plus four, so it'd be eight. 
Another eight points of damage. Not bad. All right, you get one more strike because the fury bl fury of blows. Oh, okay. So well, I, wait a minute. Oh, all right. Get, was like, I'm still learning the flurry of blows, so I don't know. Well, okay. So you get one attack, and then as a bonus action, fury of blows, which would give you two more attacks. So you have uh -huh. used them up, so you are technically okay. done. Make sure you mark off your key point uh, so that you can track it for when it comes back up again. And that is so far in that round, you did. 23 points of damage in a single round, which is not bad. So, good job on that. Hey, especially for level two. Thank I'm you for hoping... grappling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm hoping there aren't any monsters seeing, you know, Yuvia restrain uh, a woman and then someone else beat her up. <laughs> you know, this is not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On that. Yuvia is going to use her action to, or the woman is going to use her action to try and break the grapple. So, okay. those grapples. Is it a strength saving yeah, throw? It's going to be opposing strength. Opposing strength. 15! Alrighty, she is still restrained. Yay! Barbos, you're up. What would you like to do? Uh, you're, muted. you're muted, my friend. I'm bringing the axe down. Nobody tries to stab me <laughs> twice. <laughs> uh, That's fair. <laughs> I, I rolled a 12 to hit. 12, unfortunately, does not hit. Uh, do I have advantage on the, the roll? Yes, you do, still, because the still restrained, so you get to try it again. Uh, how about a 17? 17 will hit. Let it roll damage. So that is uh, seven points of uh, slashing damage. Um, right. And I would like to action surge. All righty. <clears throat> and let's see. So, uh, that, ooh, natural 20 for 25. Well played. Well played. <laughs> oh, yay. All right. So, how do you do? Uh, I, 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 I do it the, the same way one. at the other. Uh, uh, same way. You, it's your max dice plus what you roll wow. plus any additional. So the battle axe is what dice for damage? Uh, it's 1d8 plus 3. Uh, so, so 11. So, D8, so, what, so it's a d8 plus 3. Yeah. So what did you, did you already roll a d8? Uh, yes. I, yeah. So I, it's, um, so it would be 11 and then plus whatever I rolled. Uh, yes. So a full okay. d8. So 8 and 3, 11. Now roll your d8 and tell me the result. Uh, so that's an extra six damage. All right, so seventeen points of damage on that. Okay. And uh, as a bonus action, um, can I use? Uh, where is it? Uh, just to double check, make sure action surge is not a bonus action. What is not? Nope. Alrighty. What would you like to do uh, for your bonus? Uh, can I use hammering horns uh, immediately after you hit a creature with a melee attack as part of the attack action on turn? You can use a bonus action to attempt to shove that target with your horns. The target must be no more than one size large. Oh, although she's grappled, so I don't know if that would work. I never thought about that. Yeah. If not, that's fine. It's, if I'm, I just, it's, it's a good yeah. thing to it's a good thing to talk about. Yeah, sure. Trying to it only pushes her away. It doesn't do any damage, so it's not. A big yeah, deal she's restrained, game. so her movement is already zero. So it doesn't cool. do. It really would not be of any benefit. Okay, cool. No problem. And that's my turn. Good. So that is a total of twenty-four points of damage that turn. Love that. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, this brings us to Titus. All right. Uh, twenty dirty twenty to hit. That will mm -hmm. hit. Roll damage. Uh, that's eleven to. Alrighty, Yuvia, as you uh, as uh, Titus' strike comes through, you feel her go limp in your arms, and she has expired. Do you hold on to her, or do you let her go? I'll let her go slowly and uh, check about uh, her body. Check her body. As you go to check her body, you notice that it starts to change. The body shimmers and wavers in the dim mist surrounded light. The limbs flow and ebb, taking on a new shape. 
the face becomes inhuman, a monstrous visage. The creature before you is thick, ash-gray skin and a hairless skull, pointed ears out from the head. The space between the mouth and nose is far too wide, and the eyes are high on the face, leaving no forehead. The nose is broad and flat, forming a barrier between the many creases that underscore the narrow eyes. The creature has elongated arms, but has neither fingernails or to nor toenails. And that is where we're going to take a break. And we will <laughs> come back in about 10 minutes. <laughs> so... <laughs> you certainly did. The plot thickens. So, uh, I say blunt things like that, and it's just fun. Not bad, but finally got a combat in. It wasn't very long combat. <laughs> so, uh, everybody in the chat, thank you so much so far. Uh, we're gonna take a quick uh, five ten minute break. Let everybody get up, stretch, grab drinks, refresh the palate, so to speak. We'll come back and see what happens next. Back. It looks like we're back. Okay. How is the chat doing? How are all you wonderful peoples? You see this? Check the RS mod. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> I saw it. I saw that picture. <laughs> it's so epic. <laughs> um... Seriously. Well, I don't see Adam in the... I, I don't wow. think he is. I think it's just Jason and Brandon and... Uh, um, da, 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 oh my god, Joel and... Um, wow. Uh, Dave. Oh, wow. Sing along. Oh, Yeah, well, cute. they were driving up in their SUV. Like, they, they did, like, a live kind of a video thing. Yeah, they did a Instagram thingy on the yeah, drive yeah. up. Ooh, hilarious. All that fun, all that fun. How are we doing in the chat so far? As much as I would love to uh, talk about the uh, plaid, uh, <laughs> I'd like to get through the second half of this show. Then we can talk about that show and the thing. <laughs> yep, we're hanging on. Okay. I had a great reveal, and then we go to the break, right? So. Okay. That's right. I read the description of the uh, of the of the creature that seemed to change its shape after you had killed it. What are your impressions and reactions? Ooh, uh, that's cool. What's that? <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> have you been with something that matches the creature descriptions or say what I mean, uh have you been, uh, maybe read something that matches this creature description somewhere i don't know uh, <laughs> you know something about this i will I, I will give you all a chance i will let you roll a nature check nature if you are oh. proficient in nature I'm provisioned in nature, of course, and I will use my last bardic inspiration for this. Wow, you're just out the <laughs> gate. Boom, boom, boom. Yes. We just get them all out now. <laughs> Tavros knows nothing, by the way. <laughs> oh. Is, is Yuvia still holding this creature? No, no Yuvia had let, had let the creature fall okay. to the ground, and as the creature was on the ground at, within a few moments of Yuvia's letting go. The body and the figure changed and transformed into this uh, weird looking creature that lays on the ground before you with uh, a couple of slash wounds, a couple of claw wounds, and a stab wound. And yeah, I have 22 for nature check. 22. Okay. What's this relative? Is something useful? Uh. <laughs> Can I 
to touch it? <laughs> Certainly can. Hey, we're gonna touch it to see if it feels different, like the skin, like on its cheek. <laughs> uh, it's. Um. Doesn't uh, it feels like skin, but it doesn't it, it doesn't feel like anything you uh you're familiar with. Um. And it's a, it, it's, it's not, it's a, it's a creature. Uh, it looks like a creature that you've heard stories about, uh, possibly something that would change its shape to look like another. It's got so, it's some kind of shape shifting creature, but the exact specifics kind of escape you it's kind of one of those. Very, it's it's a really obscure thing because they're very hard. You don't your where you came, your region of the war, of the multiverse did not encounter them very often. Okay, so I don't have any idea where's the where they are. If anything, it might from. have been like some stories about avoid civilized places because sometimes things take take your form. Oh, okay, and. Uh, definitely related to the party. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell the party that uh, this kind of self sh shifter and it can uh, 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 shift to that uh, to match another person that it looks so, yeah. Um. And just the sight of this being so kind of unusual, I need you all to roll a constitution saving throw. Oh. save. Okay. Oh. Seven. Seven? Six. <laughs> Earl? Three. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Another natural one for me. Oh no! <laughs> mm. All this net twenties and then this. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so, <laughs> as you're thinking about seeing this figure change and the hearing the skin and the bones crack as they reform into its original form thinking about the fact that this was a woman not too long ago and now this thing uh it's a little bit too much for you to handle and you all feel absolutely horrified and nauseous in fact titus and pearl you actually do kind of lose it off to the side uh yuvia you you managed to kind of hold it but you can feel it in the back you it's not cool man it's not cool <laughs> oh, i'm really hoping people are making clips because guys are well okay. <laughs> <laughs> I even Tarvos he's like he's got a pretty solid stomach being on the battlefield and this is something that's like oh. uh, I once witnessed limbs. someone getting I... his head chopped off and this is worse <laughs> oh mm. so, yeah so I'm almost afraid to ask am I able to think about anything else right now <laughs> after a few minutes uh when you uh sit there and purposely kind of avoid looking at this thing <laughs> and um kind of you turn and everybody kind of turns and tries to get it to where it's not in their peripheral vision at all you kind of sitting there can kind of take a moment and kind of talk amongst yourselves as to what have you gotten yourselves in as so, disgusting uh, as it is, so uh, So I'm looking away from it, and and I'm like, oh, okay, somebody. I'm curious enough to know what kind of uh, needle that was. Uh, so somebody reached down. I'm not doing it. 
I, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. You, you will have to do it. And let's not forget about the other voice. <clears throat> I was just about to say, as disgusting as it is, I will reach down and try to kind of search the body and see what I can find. Body. Uh, the body is wearing the outfit, or actually, it's not really wearing an outfit per se. <laughs> Um, but you do, and, and the needle is, is, is gone. I mean, you can't really, it's, it's very weird. Like just not, you see a da you see a dagger there. You don't see a needle. Okay. Uh, I'll take up the dagger by the handle. Okay. It's a, looks like it's just a, a dagger. Yeah. A re regular run of the mill, simple dagger. Um, so, uh, once I've collected myself. Like, did you find the needle? Uh, no, but I did find uh, this. And I'll show her the dagger. And the dagger has a little bit of blood on it. That's what I thought too, but this is all I found. <laughs> well, she was not intelligent, so I'm like, I'm trying to pay attention to this. I'm trying to do it in her character. That's fair. <laughs> She's not going to know. No, <laughs> no, yeah, I have no to idea. Be honest, either, right? And to be completely honest, none of you understand what you're looking at. I mean, Yuvia's got a close idea, but even so, Yuvia's knowledge is all like hearsay and whatnot about uh, uh, some of the some really kind of obscure stories about avoiding uh, large civilized areas, and. This thing is completely foreign to anything any of you have seen. Even Titus, living in Barovia, where there's all kinds of strange and creepy. And this is worse than what he's seen before. So this is... And how it's like a, ha a, a, a pin turned to a dagger. I mean, this is just some... You know, it's some Harry Potter business up in here. You have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Do I know that it was kind of poisonous on the blade? Um, or or something on the blade, maybe not, maybe not poison, but you felt that there was some uh, like your body reacted slightly, but it, yeah. it didn't take effect. So okay. it probably was it probably was dipped in poison, but most poisons once it's used, it tends to dry up pretty quickly. Okay. Um, very few there there are a few items in the world that are like having like a, a sheath with a vial, so every time you put the blade in and pull it out, it repo it, it re recoats it with poison yeah i just didn't want to get it poisoned again if i cut myself with it accidentally no like no it, okay, it's cool. say it's just a, a regular dagger it's got a little bit of blood on it it's very weird because you know you kind of felt a prick like a hat like a pin mm -hmm. or a needle okay. yet this is a dagger i'll put it in my backpack very carefully I'm just gonna keep okay. it inside just in case tell the, the, the police guy I should have took something. Um, are you, are you guys? What do you? What else are you guys gonna do? You're gonna search the area. You're gonna try and figure out what's going on. Uh, do you uh, notice something like a mark or symbol or tattoos on the it on the creature's body, or some, like there are no emblems. birthmarks, tattoos, brands. The skin is, other than the fact it's kind of a kind of a discarded grayish color mm -hmm. it's flawless there is absolutely no marks of any type uh that would distinguish it no scars nothing right. i'll say to, to tavros uh did we not hear a second voice when he came over here yes i thought we did too or something a little bit deeper down the alleyway perhaps they are working together could go look if you'd like. Well, we can't walk away, but we don't want the, anything to take this one. No, uh, we can bring this one with us. Should we move it? Because, I mean, okay, out of character, uh, we're matching with a crime scene right now, and this is more of a more modern place. <laughs> so should we be doing this? <laughs> First, again, Pearl, I don't know if she would even pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Pearl, give me a give me a perception check. Sure. 
This is why I say things because then he can give me a roll and I can actually try to find out. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, you're seeing this body. You're sitting there looking around. You think you see something in the alley and psh, go start and search in the alley. You know Pearl's going to chase that. <laughs> yeah. Set. Here you go. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I, I pick up. Go ahead. I, I, I'll say I'm not touching that body. And I saw Pearl run off. Let's make sure she doesn't get herself killed. Should we go back to our post and bring this body? I mean, we need to show it to this inspector, right? You're a little because of the that cause. You're just a little like you're kind of all kind of it's like. <laughs> We really should, but I'm not touching that. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I mean, it's really kind of weird because even Tarvos is big and brawly. He's like, no, I'm not touching that. <laughs> oh, Pearl ran away. Let's go do that. <laughs> Ilya, you you really ought to consider a bath. I mean, you were holding that thing pretty close. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. And uh, she tried to sniff uh, like her hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> So hopefully the big baddie can't hear us all laughing in the music. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his face tells me differently. <laughs> I believe you're safe with the laughing character. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Oh, it's so hard to keep straight. <laughs> yeah, so it's Pearl's chasing the guy. Or the, yeah, the I'll follow. Him. Moved. All right. I'm curious what's in the alley as well. All right. So uh, as you as you all enter the alleyway, I need uh, I need you all to give me investigation check. Why is it all the bad stats? <laughs> me too. <laughs> Zero on all these. Ten. Seventeen. Yeah, I rolled ten as well. Seventeen. Ten. Harvos, what'd you get? Uh, same as uh, the Pearl ten. Ten, okay. <laughs> yeah. Besides your back, like, oh. I have a I have a feeling that the audience is going to be uh, really helping you guys out next week uh, when I release the new viewer interaction stuff. Uh, they can contribute bits to give you better dice rolls. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> And give you bonuses to some of your skill checks. Because, yeah, either that or Titus, you need to go and get a set of dice that have not been touched by Will Wheaton. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, that question in the chat, the answer yes, that is a possibility too. Uh, oh no, please. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not gonna be a but it has to be at the right moment. <laughs> like Yeah. Alright. <laughs> so Earl and Tarvos, you guys, uh, as you, you're going through and kind of looking about, scanning around, Titus is just trying to keep track of the of Pearl as she's just flitting about. Yulia, as you guys go in, as you're going in, uh, you notice they walk past, but you notice something they passed. You see a boot, uh, act, uh, kind of actually more of a heel of a shoe and a, and a leg. Sticking out of a sticking out from behind a corner. As you turn and look, you see the body of a woman. 
lying there, motionless, on the ground. Uh, yeah, I will uh, wand the party and uh, point out to the buddy. All right. So you guys come back. You see, there's a a, a woman uh, who is in a brightly colored outfit, very reminiscent of the one the creature was wearing before it attacked you. She looks almost exactly like the woman that attacked you, but she's lying here, motionless on the ground. Obviously. I'll I'll, uh, I'll take a defensive stance and kind of uh, keep a uh, uh, look at while everybody watches and right, kind of Pearl? investigate the girl. I'm going to very carefully uh, uh, investigate the body there, see if it's dead or you know. That would be a medicine check. Let me guess, another one of those wonderful skills you've got. <laughs> yeah, well, really, actually, it's not as bad. That's good. Twenty, thirty, twenty. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Finally, <laughs> I'll tell you a result in a moment. It's Titus, okay. uh, what are you going? What, what what's your reaction to sight? Um, I am going to is so this this alleyway is is off of the street that we were. Yes, using. this is an alleyway. It kind of comes in and turns a couple of corners and kind of zigzags its way uh, behind a few buildings. That meets up with a few others, but most of what you could see is they could turn a corner and then turn and turn another corner. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a defensive stance with my back towards Tavros. Copy to that. Yuvia, what about you? Maybe I'll go check the body also. All right, go ahead and Drive give me it. a medicine check as well. Yep. Um, she's pretty good at it. Oh, 13. All righty. So, as uh, Yuvia and, and, and Pearl, as you go to inspect the body, looking for any any obvious wounds or whatnot, you do notice that she is in fact dead. But she appears to be strangled. There are no knife wounds or weapon wounds or punctures, cuts, anything. But you can tell the, te the telltale marks of uh, discoloration around the throat as you... Kind of open the eye and look at the eye. You see the iris is, is wide from a lack of oxygen. And leads you to think that this person has been strangled. Recently. Okay, well, I'm going to relay that. And then I'm instantly going to be like, well, this is not the same as the murders. This is weird. <laughs> and like, she got strangled. Uh, would we... Would we have noticed, um, let me rephrase the question. When we inspected the previous body uh, and saw the slit throat, was there any sign, any signs of strangulation? Roll a history check. Nineteen. Hey. No. There were no oh. signs of strangulation. <laughs> So. It was a very clear cut, ear to ear. This is definitely different. How do we tell people? I don't want this to change. We need to tell people. I go tell them. I'll go. I'll go right now. And I start walking away. Uh, which way as are you? As you're having this conversation, you hear in the distance the chiming of the bells, okay. signifying that it is now midnight. This isn't even, we're not even dealing with the actual once, verse. That are... Once again, the city clock sounds the hour of the night. The echoes muffled by the fog as the last peal of the bell dies away. You hear the sound of running footsteps, gasping sobs. The young figure of a woman runs out of the mist, her coat open, her hair disheveled, her arms stretched out before her. Her hands are smeared with red. Tears streak her face. The terrified woman sees you and skids to a stop, recoiling in fear. Then, gathering her courage, she speaks. Sandra, she gasps. Sandra's been killed. I only left her for a moment. I put my head. We already had one person say, hey, help, miss. And attacked her, so I got my fists up. 
Is does is she looking at the body that we're standing around? No, she came from another direction, and she's got. As you look at her, she has visible signs of blood. I mean, she is crying. She is so distraught. Insight, just in case. Okay. Roll that insight check. <clears throat> Everybody else, if you want to do it too, I'll give it to you. Go ahead and roll yeah, an insight. Yeah. yeah. After that last encounter. <sighs> 22. Uh, 10. 15. Do I even Seven. want to ask? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I won't ask. <laughs> the mist gets into his nose and he coughs. <laughs> it's a roll, but you need to try something else. Uh, Pearl, you said you got what, a 22? Thank you. All right. Uh, your question is: Is she trying to deceive you? Is she, or what? What's your question? Um, is it another trap? Like no, you? she is legitimately scared and actually, uh, kind of traumatized in a state of shock. Can I tell which way she came from? Uh, yes, she came from further down the street. She'd actually run uh, kind of in front of the alley uh, from down the, down the street a ways. Happened to see you and charged over to you. Okay. So she she's be she'll bet she'll beckon you and lead you back to where where her friend Sandra is if you're willing to go. I would I would would we would be willing to go if the rest of the party is. I'm is sorry, she... Pearl. Say again. You're you're going so. in and out. Say again. Uh, I think some of us should stay with this too, just so it doesn't get disturbed. Okay. But you know, Pearl's not going to want to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I I'd say to to Pearl, I don't think this one's gonna go anywhere. I'm pretty sure. I mean, you you looked. She's dead. Does that mean someone else want to take it? That other thing's kind of weird. I could see someone taking that. But given that there's blood on this one's hands, and this one was killed by strangulation, I, I, what's that? I didn't say we shouldn't go. I said some of us should go. Some of us stay. Okay, well, I, I will be within five feet of you. <laughs> did you say? I'm off. afraid we're all going this one. Sorry. Yeah. It's not my fault, but I told you. And I start running. I'm all right. Uh, she, uh, so, uh, she leads you <clears throat> back um, to a <clears throat> kind of a larger building. Uh, there's a set of stairs that lead up into it, a large set of heavy, uh, wooden doors leading inside, in, inside the, uh, you see the windows are lit and you see the silhouettes of, pe of multiple people walking and conversating, uh, in the, uh, behind the windows and there on the steps of this building, you see another woman who is been, uh, who's been, killed a large slash across her neck uh and just uh blood along some of her clothes but there's no pool of blood or anything else it seems to be kind of there yeah i told you it was different this is the one that we were looking for is this uh, uh, is this area within our watch uh range or i mean uh or guard, guard force, we supposed to uh, patrol on this area, or it's outside the range? It's kind of outside where you were set to be patrolling. Uh, <laughs> on the same note, you do remember uh, the f hearing that there was going to be some type of meeting with a bunch of people, oh, and this yeah. could be this could be the building they're having the meeting, which is weird because now we have the murder right in front of the building. Sure. Uh, the woman who, who who's just in, in, in just a complete mess of emotions and terror is sitting there sobbing. Uh, it's 
going on about she just left her for a few minutes. She thought she'd be safe here. She does her friend and it's just here that on the ground. Away, that definitely takes away the idea that they that the murder was or that the cops were done in a separate place because if it was only a few minutes, there's no way they could have taken it away and put it back within a few minutes. I'll, I'm going to ask the woman uh, if she noticed anyone talking to Sandra earlier on in the night, maybe, or if anybody was maybe staring at her, kind of, uh, if anybody looked suspicious no. a little bit. No, nothing. She, she, does, okay. she doesn't recall anything. Uh, she keeps going on. Right now, she's kind of in a state of shock, so she's kind of yeah, kind of set, set on this uh, with what's going on. Okay. Um... I have a minus one to investigation, so I should. I think I should keep investigating. Um, I uh, uh, I'd like to check the body to see if there's the same wounds of like the cut with the organs and all that stuff. Go ahead. Can I, I look to, to see if I can actually get one of the actual constables or something to help us? Because obviously we don't have the abilities to call everybody else. Yes. Yes. You can, uh, you can certainly go and That's take a look for. if you wish. Do I see uh, any guard that's supposed to uh, patrol this area from? Uh, not immediately. Go ahead and give me a perception check, and Pearl, give me a perception check as well. Uh, Tarvos, what about you? What are you doing? I'm sorry, I missed it. I missed what you said. Uh, Pearl and Yuvia are searching for constables. You're still. You're gonna. You were trying to talk to the woman, try and get some information out of her and calm her. Okay, Titus. Yeah. What'd you get on, what did you get on your investigation? Seventeen. Wow. Oh, nice. Um. Yes. Uh, it's a very similar cut pattern to what you've seen before. Um. It doesn't look. It. Uh, it's the cut across the throat. And then a couple of uh, uh, an incision uh, in the body, and no blood, other than a little bit uh, that was initially there. But uh, there isn't much left. There isn't much blood left. It actually um, there isn't much blood left uh, on the body. Um, Earl, what did you get for your investigation? Uh, for my perception, I got a nineteen. Yeah, nineteen on perception. Awesome. Uh, Yuvia, what'd you get on your perception? 21. One. All right. Uh, as you two kind of uh, go off and take a look, uh, you do see a figure in the mist. Uh, riding uh, a figure in the mist. You think it might be a constable. Um, and as you go to look toward them, you're the most out of the corner of your eye. You catch the motion. As a figure dressed with a cloak and a top hat and a mustache lunges out from a from a side from a alcove and goes to attack the two of you. Um Pearl does Does a twenty three hit. Yes. It hits? Yes. All right, that is going to be five points of slashing damage as a dagger comes out and strikes at you. Ow! What'd you do that for? And as the uh, as he retracts the dagger, he goes to turn and run. You get a chance for an you both of you get a chance for an attack of opportunity. Okay. I'll do that with my sword sword. I'm gonna I'm gonna attack it with my sword. <sighs> Quick, oh, hold on. 11 to... What'd you get, Yuvia? Eleven. Uh, Eleven does not hit, unfortunately. Pearl. Fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen hits. Roll damage. I got a six. Points of damage. Okay. So it's a kind of a glancing blow, and he just he just keeps he just keeps on running. I'll cast uh, 
comment on him and okay. uh, to like wait what was he approach all do right. i see all this happening uh give me just a moment let me finish with his yeah, spell sure. and then i'll yep. let, then i'll then i'll let you know that's the uh save uh wisdom save 13 is it 13 all right makes the save and, and it doesn't appear to stop continues to go at this point tarvos and titus uh you guys hear pearl comment about being stabbed and look and see the figure darting off down the street how far would you say he is from uh he is about 15 feet 15 feet away from a uh, pearl and pearl and, and uvia were about 15 feet from you and as you look, he's about twenty feet as he's striding away. Okay. So he's about I... twenty. He's about twenty feet from your current position. Can I use the dash action to try to catch up with him? Certainly can. Um, and if I can catch up with him, I would like to use Goring Rush um, to make a melee attack with my bonus. Uh, excuse me, uh, melee attack with my horns um, after moving at least twenty feet. Alrighty. Go ahead and roll for attack. Uh, uh, 17 17 will hit Four. Oh, fantastic max damage 9 9, nine piercing damage. damage okay Say again uh, yeah 9 piercing damage alright so you get up and you kind of hit him and he takes the hit and uh, is knocked uh, kind of knocked and somewhat dazed Titus, what are you gonna? What are you doing? Is he still fleeing or no? Uh, yes, he is still fleeing. He's uh, trying to regain his his stuff, and he's uh, about to. St he's going to get away because Tarvos hit him just at that moment where he's uh, he's going to start his dash to continue out. Um, it, if I use my full movement thirty feet, will I catch up to him? No, fortunately, you will not. Okay, so uh, I will run to the side of uh, uh, Pearl and use uh, Lay on Hands Yay. for uh, five points. Yay. You're nice. <laughs> so as you get up there and, 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 and Tarvos has come, uh, turns back, he's got a little bit of blood on his horn. Um Give me a perception check for everybody. <sighs> oh no. <laughs> Somebody has to roll high, please. Come on. That's <laughs> uh, a natural one. For four. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just supposed to be good at this, but I get net one. <laughs> Nineteen. Yes. Oh, there you go. As uh, Titus comes up and puts his hand on you and you feel the warmth energy of healing and they're all kind of focused, you hear the sound of rip, like, clo like cloth or fabric has been ripped recently somewhere. I can find it. And you, re you, run, you rush over to it and... Evidence. <laughs> you find a scrap of cloth with a tailor's mark sewn into it. Oh, that's even better. First, he's like, "Ooh, there's stuff on here." All right. Man. And at this at, at at this point, you start to hear uh, the sound of whistles and footsteps as constables are coming over. As you turn back and see, the doors have opened at the building, and some people are seeing uh, the woman there and the other woman who's who's still kind of there, just covered in, in, in the blood and the constables rush over and uh, look like they start to detain her. I run over and grab at least one of the constables and like, we have more people that are dead. All right, go ahead and do a quick persuasion. Oh no. Oh, persuasion. That's this one. Did that guy get away from me? Yes, he got away. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. How much? A three. Uh, he's he, he's like 
That's too many false alarms tonight, girl. Too many I, false alarms. We we have. I, I'm maintaining my tradition of uh, staying within five feet. Of the wall. So uh, I will also try to persuade this girl. How about this? We will let Pearl roll with advantage because you're there assisting. <laughs> This is gonna help, but we'll try. While they're doing that, can I wipe the blood off of uh, uh, his blood off of my horns and kind yep. of make sure that I very, very carefully wrap it up and put it in my pocket? Okay. That's a seven. Okay. <laughs> um. It's not a strong suit. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I picture this. I mean, you're you're standing there with weapons. Well, and I'm bouncing. And and kind of bouncing about. Titus is is there. He's still has his, still has his sword, his shield on, and and he, he may he may or may, he may not have a sword, but it looks like you guys are ready for a fight. And you're telling a constable there are more dead people somewhere. And yeah, not exactly a very convincing thing, especially when looks past you and sees Tarvos kind of wiping off his horn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna say I'm gonna turn around and come back and say uh, it's, okay. there so, was so we'll, we'll, we'll say that away. little bit about him wiping <laughs> wiping something off his horn. Um, Yuvia, do you want to make an attempt at this? <laughs> yeah, I will try to uh, explain to the uh, constable. All right, um, and I'll let you. <laughs> No, there's uh two two bodies yeah. two more bodies here, like. And a guy got away. And yeah, and one culprit got away. See, look. Yeah. He, oh no, you already healed me. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no! Oh, so you guys, a little tear, a little tear in your in your kimono there as he stabbed at you. Um. Yeah. Uh. Okay. It it takes some persuading. as some more. Uh, officers arrive um, but he does uh, go with you you do lead him back and as you lead him back uh, you lead him to where the woman you, you, see the, the, you see the woman there but the other body is gone I told you I told you <laughs> you, here. you didn't listen to me they took it away I told you the constable is quite confused with the reaction Never mind her. She gets excited. Tavros, you, you still have the dagger. Yes, I'll pull out the dagger. This is yeah. not my dagger. You can clearly <laughs> see that I have bigger weapons than this. We found this on a woman tonight. Uh, the constable uh, accepts the dagger and looks at it and uh, kind of nods. Uh, he'll take it, take that and starts uh, writing in some notes and, and Get in the body and um i will, uh, will and, and kind of and kind of blows his whistle to get somebody else to come over okay. soon a couple more come and they are checking that body getting your statements and whatnot i'm gonna pull out the cloth with his blood on it the enemy's blood and say this 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 is the blood on my horns from the enemy that got away i don't know if you could do anything with it but it's better that you have it than i the material and the material look and the material, of course. All right. I'll and give everything more or less that we have discovered to the constables. Okay. And he... so that we trust. If we yeah, well, like I said, I want to try to trust. prove our innocence as much as we can. Okay. He had... let us. I was going to say, I freely offer to tell the guy that we're here at the behest of Inspector Logan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he accepts all of uh, all of that stuff and says... All right, uh, we'll get this uh, to Inspector Logan, and um, cause you do you give him everything you found? Can uh can I take the uh fabric back? I mean, I I rather to give to Inspector Logan by ourselves. Okay. Oh, good call. Yeah. Okay. And do you right. know where Inspector Logan is right now? Uh, not sure. He should be. He'll probably be here at some point, but I. I think it's best that you all head back to head, head back to your residence for the night. Uh, any further questions, Inspector Logan will come and find you in the morning. 
Yes. Is he always late? Inspector Logan? He's an inspector. He comes when he's needed. <laughs> when do you think he would be around? I'm not an inspector. No. No, you are not. Clearly. <laughs> I, I'll, uh, I'll ask the, the constable. I, I know it's a, it's a late hour, but you wouldn't happen to know where I could find some yarn a ball, oh, God. something. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a little bell with a call. Oh, bell. I mean, you know, just to, no, no reason really. Just, I'm just curious. Fashion. He sits there as a, at this time of night, probably not. But I imagine any seamstress in the city would be able to uh, help you with a ball of yarn. Good to know. It's, speaking of, of of seamstresses uh talk about something completely different um <laughs> we found this the, the cloth that that we showed you do you recognize this taylor's mark uh he takes a look at it and comments that it looks like it is uh probably from the it's from the winking eye stitchery uh that seems to be their brand their logo uh, branding. Um, so. All right. I thank him and take it back and give it back to Yuvia. You know where it is. Uh, it's he uh, kind of recites the uh, the location for you, mm -hmm. so that you can uh, head over to that place. That's currently at this time of night is closed, so. It'd be a matter of checking that in the morning. Can okay, you uh, tell us we... anything? Sorry, go ahead. Do we have a map of this city? <laughs> ah. A, I'm glad you're back. You're <laughs> like, I was in character <laughs> saying that. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. Um. I do not have one I can give you just now, but he does provide you with a map so that you can uh, find your way back to uh, the the lodging house as well as where the uh, his, actually he describes it. And if one of you takes a pen and and or an ink, or some type of writing utensil, and jots it down uh, where to go, the directions, and how to get to back to your lodging house as well as to check out the stitchery on the more on the following day can i ask her if she can tell us anything about the seamstresses if there's anything that'll help us get some information out of them or uh seem uh, seamstresses are typically people who fashion clothes and whatnot so that's is this happens to be a pretty pro pretty uh a pretty prominent one that does a lot of business for a lot of people typically okay. more of your middle to upper class yeah. So nothing about the owner, though, like nothing specific about the owner. No. Okay. Cool. Other than they're re they're a reputable member of society. Okay. I have an idea. If maybe we can get her on or the, the seamstress on our side, if I pay her to fix my my kimono first. I like that. Yeah, there's a tear there. There is. That certainly. Yeah, is. I like that. That's smart. Alrighty. I think it's a good idea for me to play with it. Like, play with it. <laughs> <laughs> when the DM holds his head in his hands. <laughs> I love that I keep getting him. <laughs> <sighs> well, I have a brother that has all that, that is, is uh, mildly mentally retarded, and he does that, so that's why I'm thinking of that. Oh. <laughs> you can't leave any holes alone, so it makes sense with her being hyper that she would do that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so you come back to your lodging house, go inside, uh, sleep for the night, take a long rest, ready and refreshed, come down in the morning to Auntie and her wonderful pies. Yay! And milk and coffee and all of those breakfast drinks and, and whatnot. I make me mix. And you continue to work on your on perfecting your 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 drink. <laughs> I 
after we're, after breakfast, uh, you do head out and you come o and you make your way to the uh, Winking Eye Stitchery. And as you step, as you come up to the shop front, uh, it uh, looks like they have it looks like they have just opened. As you step inside, you see man all manners of you see several little little workstations and people are stitching and, and stitching on stitching and working on fabrics with these mechanized machines as some of them are stitching with hand you see racks with clothing and whatnot uh, as well as a small little kind of show show area in the front uh, and they and in the back uh, eventually an, uh, a woman or a gentleman steps forward and uh, is uh, is an elf uh, seems to be very very uh, immaculately dressed and in suit indicative of some of the um, upper class that you have seen about the city and he looks to you and says good day uh, what can I do for you I can't hear you Pearl so sorry I, I, I'm kind of whistling that's, that's why I was kind of whispering to my sister I probably shouldn't talk, but I want to. I, I look uh, this guy up and down and see if he's like missing any corners of his uh, his clothing. Is he wearing a top hat? Does he have like an evil mustache? Anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and roll an investigation check. Do you have ever seen this uh, stitching machine, <laughs> like what they have, because she might be uh, completely uh, distracted by them. Um. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, roll an investigation <laughs> check for yourself. All right. Any like fun things to touch? Twenty. <laughs> Dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Okay. I I will come back to you. Just like I'll come back to Titus. Um, <laughs> Pearl. You're in a place that sells clothes. There are racks of clothes. There are bits of ribbon and other materials on the bench, <laughs> as this is a seamstress of some type. Um, I need you to make a. Um, let's make a wisdom save. God. Yes. Let's do a wisdom save. Oh, I'm actually pretty good at wisdom. Let's see how it goes. 14. 14. The compulsion <laughs> to go and play with the stuff you see on the bench and the fact that you see a bit of fabric that has pins in it placed as if it is ready to be stitched and your feet, you, you see that and, and the strings and the ribbons of, this, of the materials and you kind of slowly... <laughs> <laughs> ever non as much as you can the urge just draws you over to it and as you are about to reach out your pawed hands to go and grab it the gentleman's excuse me miss Darvos, what are you doing? I'm sorry. I'm I not, not let this. that go without addressing uh, I'm it. not doing uh, I'm I'm shaking my head uh, um, I, and I'm looking around. Do I notice any um, any daggers that look like needles? <laughs> no, I'm not no. even gonna make your roll for that one. No, uh, yeah, yeah. there are needles. There are needles. <laughs> um, Titus, what was your investigation check? Nine. Nine. <laughs> um, no mustache. He's indoors, so no top hat. Mm. Uh, he's a very slender build. Has a measuring tape draped around his neck. Um, has a kind of a, a, a tie and, and collared shirt. He looks very, nothing looks out of place or ripped or any any state other than immaculate. I mean, there's not even a bit of lint on his vest. I mean, it is immaculate. Uh, Yuvia, what did, you said you got a dirty 20 on your investigation? Yes. And you want to know if you had seen these contraptions before? Yeah. No. These are... Somewhat uh, new to you, as with many things in the city, 
Uh, but they are fascinating to see as you see a couple of people kind of working and, and their foot's kind of moving up and down and, and it, it, there's the gears and whatnot are moving and, and it's like you kind of hear this thump, 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 thump. They kind of push <laughs> fabric through and back. It's very fascinating. Yeah. As we came inside the building, did we notice a coach outside? A carriage outside? No? <laughs> there were people starting to walk about. It's still fairly early in the day. Uh, oh, most yeah. people are getting through their stuff. You guys just got right into it because you wanted to get your investigation going. Okay, cool. And he looks back to you and says, Is there something you need? Oh, oh, I need this one. <laughs> Takes a look at it. And the ribbon. Oh, what is that? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm still reaching for the ribbon. <laughs> so, do you have something else? It's still on you. Do you have something else that you can wear so that we could possibly take a look at this? Because <laughs> the fact that you're wearing the same clothes as the night before, I'm uh, it's like okay. <laughs> no, I, I I just only wear it for the outfit. Did you bring it as in you changed clothes, or is it the same thing you were wearing from the night before? What? Oh, like in character? Or? Yes, in character. I don't even think I have another outfit. Let me look. I don't oh. think so. Because I don't think any inventorying thing gives you more more than one clothes except for like a bard <laughs> or. Uh... That's not entirely true. Each yeah. class. Well, I will say this: that most monks start off with the lowest uh, starting wealth. I have traveler's clothes. That's it. Okay. Ah, no. uh, he looks at it's just. Uh... Oh, then, then clearly you need something else to wear. And he kind of motions over to a rack with uh, a couple of dresses on it. And it's like, this is uh, typically fashionable for young ladies. How much are they? Uh, that would be a gold piece for the dress, for a dress on this rack. Okay. All right. He goes and he kind of picks one out and points you over Does to it. Them? I'm sorry, you're say that again. Do any of them have ribbons on them? Oh yes, yes. Here he pulls one out. It's a, a very plain looking dress with a few ribbons on it. Very okay. very simple, very plain. And uh it kinda ushers you over to a changing area that you may go in and uh change into uh this dress. So while you're doing that, uh what are the rest of you what are the rest of you doing? Pay for it too. was about to ask something and uh, like showing the uh, clothes bit, the uh, the stitcher mark on it, but then she was just distracted and <laughs> see it at uh, at some people sewing things yeah. <laughs> with uh, her hands held up. Uh... <laughs> uh, Titus will just kind of. Just nudge Ivia and just say, oh, uh, "You were you were saying." Uh, oh, all oh, right. Uh, is this uh, from here? I... Yeah, uh, takes a look at it. And it's, yes, this is this is from uh, this is uh, looks like it's one of our brands from a uh, cloak. Uh, we do we we happen to sell quite a few of them. Is it a? Go ahead, Ivia a few so uh do you have like uh uh few like uh uh what was it the uh the usual council i mean only a few people buy it i mean do you have like he, he ushers over he's got a full rack of cloaks oh okay. so it's a very popular item for this for this shop. Does the cloak a bit look rather new or is it like tattered or, or... um looks at it uh it's, looks like it's uh, been worn. Um it doesn't look terribly old. I... Um <laughs> <laughs> I 
Thanks, Google. Actually, I use the uh, the echoes, but the joke's still good. Um, um I was gonna ask the shop owner if if, if he sold um, any cloaks to any specific people with a mustache in the past couple of days. Uh, quite a few. I mean, mustache is a fairly common uh, facial facial feature with most of the gentlemen in this. Did any of them have their own coachmen, perhaps their own carriage? Uh, maybe any of them wore a top hat? Quite a few of them do. And yeah. as you ask this question, you remember back that most men, when they're out in public, they all wear top hats. It's the fashion. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's the I expected know, fashion whatever. of the day. Yeah. Okay. So, but, and, and, and not to try to, not to sound, no, 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 just, no, no. he's a little like, yes, quite, quite a few. In fact, uh, points across the street, there's a hat shop with, uh, racks of top hats of varying sizes in the, uh, window. What kind of clothes did I just buy? Uh, you bought, uh, essentially a... A fairly inexpensive, uh, common uh, merchants, uh, like a common, uh, common clothes. Okay. Uh, it's a dress. It's very simple and and whatnot. But he made it sound like it was uh, more than it was. Well, yeah, because I, I can see the price on the B and B Beyond. It's like half the full price. But yeah. <laughs> Hey, I had to get it sewn, right? So, and I'm That's trying fair. to, I'm trying to give him business so he'll talk to us. So, yep. I, you know, I have reasons. I'm not being, you know. Yes. It has ribbons. It has ribbons. So. It does have ribbons. It has ribbons. You're, he, he had you at ribbons. <laughs> How much is a ball of ribbon? Two silver. Yeah, I'll ball a ball. I buy a ball of ribbon for, for uh, pearl. Okay. Now you have your own ball of ribbon, and you can leave these ones alone. Hey, hey Tavers, I told you you oh, were very nice. welcome. Like I, I sit down like in a corner, and I'm like going back. Up. At least now she's not running away. And uh, he takes uh, as you come out. He kind of <laughs> takes it and, and looks at it, and says he calls and calls up one of his assistants, hands it to him, and they go right to work uh, working on stitching it up. Uh, Titus, what about you? Or you guys were asking about the cloaks. They're a fairly common item. They sell a lot of them. It's a very common style for the gentlemen in the area. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, I, I, I would ask uh, the uh, shopkeep. Uh, has anyone come in to get their cloak repaired this morning? No. No one has come in for any repairs yet. If yeah. they do, would you be able to let us know? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I apologize. That was, that was going to be my, my next question. We bumped into this guy last night, and you know, he kind of stumbled away and, and uh, tore his cloak. And you know, we just wanted to, maybe, maybe we can help pay for it. I, I don't know. Uh, he seems OK with that. He'll, uh... Uh, is there a way he can con contact you? Uh, yeah, I'll tell him we're staying at the inn. Okay. So. Well, at least he's not that way. I think you should have said, Auntie can get a hold of us, not tell him where we were, because now if, the, the, if, if someone else finds out where we live, they could come and kill us in our sleep. <laughs> <laughs> eh, that's in the past. <laughs> Alrighty. So he takes down the address and will let you know. Um, and he uh, uh, kind of holds out his hand, kind of, kind of, kind of subtly, kind of holds out his hand, uh, expecting uh, some uh, compensation for keeping an eye out for a repair. I'll give him five gold, or two or three gold, not five, two or three. <laughs> uh, he takes it, kind of slips it. Uh, uh, in his pocket. So, as soon as I hear something, I will be sure to let you know. And what was your name, sir? Uh, he tells you that his name is uh, Ire. 
when will my kimono be done? It feels weird wearing not something else besides my kimono. I like it. Uh, it's probably within the next uh, few minutes. It's not a very it's not a very complicated okay. repair. As he looks back, the uh, uh, the aide brings it up and sa and uh, says it'll be uh, two silver for the repair. It has it has ribbons too. So now it's it's actually a very very uh very good repair. Hey, is it two silver? Two silver. Hmm. Ask you something. Oh, where were you last night? Upstairs. Do I uh? Can I do an inside check on that? Sure. <laughs> Just in case. Oh. Ten. Seems completely truthful to you. Alright. <laughs> she she nods and okay. <laughs> Just curious. There's not a uh, mechanized lady in the shop anywhere, right? No. Okay. In fact, as you uh <laughs> Uh, as you exit the sh is there anything else you wish to ask of him? Um, I'll ask if, if he's heard uh, of any, uh, any if he knows anything specific about what's been going on uh, at night with the, the murders, if he could provide any more detail than uh, you know, perhaps of the, if he's heard anything from the the ladies that might come in to have their their uh, their dresses tailored. Nope. Uh, he's heard that as many like many merchants have uh, talked. There's a a reward for finding the murderer, but hey, it's like it's uh, it's happening again. The best to do is stay inside and it'll eventually pass, as it as it always does. And at this point, you can kind of get the indication, because, again, he's an elf, that he's got a very long memory. Mm. He's not particularly phased by the murders at all, other than they are, they are they, have an, they have a slight impact on his business, but nothing too terrible. Okay. Mm. So, no leads? Should we go back and discuss this with instructor, Inspector Logan later? Yes. I, I don't believe we have we much can... of a choice right now. Yeah, nothing we can do at this point. All right, so you guys leave the shop and uh, make your way back. Uh, as you kind of navigate your way through the streets, you do notice that on the corner of the street, you see some activity of some type. As you go to take a look, you see uh, a couple. You see a few, uh, several gnomes, and a human, all kind of hovering around this mechanical figure that seems to be uh, frozen, stride, and looking at looking at it, it appears to be the same mechanical woman you saw walking the night before. It appears to have seized up and is currently motionless uh, on a cor on uh, on the side of the street somewhere. And as you go back into the uh, into the lodging house to uh, speak with Professor Logan, and that is where we will end the session for this week, as it is uh, almost uh, almost time, and want to kind of work through our post session. To kind of see how things are. Um, we will uh, pick up again uh, next week with uh, Inspector Logan coming to talk to you about the previous night's events and see what happens. He's not going to be happy. Probably not. <laughs> Just saying. But who knows? I feel uh, like we got a lot of good information this, yes. this go around. Yeah, yeah, very it, much so. it, it, it was a, it was a, a, a thrilling kind of kind of up and down back and forth uh so 
as typical with my sessions lately, and it's a good habit I got into, and I'm going to carry it forward, is I would like to ask each of you what your favorite and uh, other uh, moment of the session. I can't really say scariest, because you really haven't had a lot of <laughs> lot of lot of danger as of yet. But definitely, what's your what was your favorite moment? What was your kind of other other or not so favorite moment? So I will start with Pearl. What was your f let me know. There were so many good ones. I had so much fun today because I had so much to work with. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I'm impre I'm happy for that. Any of the things I can do, like zigzagging and, and chasing after things and the ribbons and, you know, just all the fun stuff like that. But if you I, could I, boil it down to one thing that sticks out, what would it be? Titus chasing after me. <laughs> five feet away the whole night <laughs> that that's a fair he was quite winded at the end of that night <laughs> he was with all of his armor and i don't have any <laughs> yep yep uh what was your least favorite moment of the session <laughs> my least favorite moment was that they didn't listen to me about the body and it disappeared that's fair tarvos how about you sir what was your favorite and least favorite moment of the session? <laughs> well, it's 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 funny because my favorite uh, moment and and my not so favorite moment were actually the same moment, um, and it was when we all saw the shifter change um, and kind of all vomited more or less. And that was my favorite. <laughs> what wasn't my favorite was that we all collectively rolled horrible. <laughs> Like it was just a mess. Just, and this is why you can't the script these once. things. <laughs> yeah. It was like everybody took the roles and went, yeah, screw it. <laughs> that, that was is, <laughs> That is fair. That is fair. Uh, Titus, what about you? What was your favorite and least favorite moment of the session? I, uh, I am. What comes to my mind is my favorite moment was the same moment that kept happening over and over again, and that was me shaking my head <laughs> at the chaos. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my, my least favorite moment, my least favorite moment was the guy getting away. That was like, I really wanted to catch him, but I was glad that I was able to you know, at least uh, heal. Uh, Thank you. That's fair. All right, Yuya, what about you? What was your favorite and least favorite? And welcome back. I know you've had a <laughs> lot you. going on, so I want to take a moment, say welcome back. Yay. Glad you're back. You. Glad every. Uh, Glad to be back. So hopefully yeah. everything is getting better. It's getting better. Um, so a lot happened, and it was fun, but. Uh, my favorite moment is that when the Sep shifter encounter that like we've rolled a lot of night twenties and then roll horribly after that <laughs> on the concept <laughs> and then every time uh, Titus roll <laughs> horribly it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and your least favorite moment of the session? My least favorite moment is that uh, I used my boons like i should have used that on different target i mean i thought it was a uh, deception star was the one that uh i mean the it, uh was the culprit who do all the killing with all the ladies with their throat cut but yeah i should have saved the advantage for that one and then also the bardic inspirations that I thought it might give us leads, but no. <laughs> What's a bummer? I love all, all my boons. I use up. I use them all. <laughs> At least you're using them. So far, it's like you, some some people they have them and then they kind of forget they're there and then try to go back to it. I totally understand. I, I, I'm not <laughs> remembering to do that. That's fine. I don't even know how many I have anymore. <laughs> <Last try. laughs> oh, I don't have a list right off the top of my head, unfortunately. 
But that is why it's important to take notes and keep track of these things. A lot that can go on, a lot of information, bit, bits and bits and whatnot that you get that you might need to keep in mind for later. But uh, overall, it sounds it seems everybody had a great time. Uh, there was a lot of really disastrous skill checks. <laughs> I think that's probably the nicest thing I could say about it because honestly, I think that's what makes the sessions all the more interesting is when it's like, I'm going to do this really cool thing. Nope. No, I'm not. not. <laughs> <laughs> so, to be all good to go. Um, thank you. Everyone, so much for spending your Saturday night with us. Uh, the chat, everybody, the cast, you guys are awesome and amazing. Thank you for uh, taking the time. Uh, Andy, I hope your day goes pretty well. This is probably a good way to start your day. <laughs> um, yeah, so everyone in the chat, thank you. Again, a uh, quick uh, recap on things. Thank you to Sirenscape for all of the background music. And soundboards that we use, that we use uh, go to check out sirenscape.com to take a look at their wide library of things. Uh, it looks like they just released the Rhyme of the Frost Maiden sound sets, which are really awesome and amazing. There's a set for each of the towns in Ten Towns, as well as Wandering the the Open Tundra. So that's awesome. Uh, come back, check us out tomorrow morning. I'll be doing a new show Sunday with Scoob, where again. We talk, we drink some coffee, we unpack the sessions and talk about it, and we, you know, play some games and maybe do some other random. Um, Tuesday night, of course, is Scuba and the Rye, the our podcast, which started uh, all of this kind of fun, zany craziness. Join us as we talk about movies, video games, D and D games, uh, random internet stories, and just kind of have a nice Tuesday night chill and hang out. Uh, so come check us out. And then next Saturday, of course, we'll start the day with Twilight's Gleaming. And then we will end the day with Challenge Accepted. And we'll see how this crazy train continues on. Uh, if nobody has anything else from the cast, uh, you guys are awesome and amazing. It takes resources to do this. And if you think this is great and uh, worthy of coming back, please consider following us if you haven't followed us already subscribe uh check us out on our youtube like follow subscribe there so you can be kept up to date on what's going on i know i've been a little late on videos but i'm gonna get those out and you know we see what happens on our next adventure so with that everybody stay safe wear your masks be careful and if you're in the u.s voting is uh just a few weeks away make sure you get out and vote because your voice is important and it needs to be heard. Everyone else, we will see you on our next stream. Good night, everybody.